Ladies and gentlemen, they say that prayer is everywhere in Tibet. On the lips of men, on prayer flags, on bits of paper stamped with woodblock imprints, in the clean air, in the clear water. The prayers are, however, not to the gods. Tibetans believe that the mantras will be blown by the wind to spread goodwill and compassion from the roof of the world, as Tibet is known, to every nook and cranny in the universe. We are indeed fortunate that we have with us today the Venerable Samdang Rinpoche, who is himself an epitome of compassion and also of humility and scholarship. Born Lobsang Tenzin in 1939 in the Tibetan province of Kham, known for its rugged terrain and stunning mountain ridges, he was, as Mr. Ravi and Mr. Narayan mentioned, recognized as the reincarnation of the fourth Samdang Rinpoche at the age of five. Rinpoche means precious one, a term used for religious teachers held in high esteem by Tibetan Buddhists. He took his vows as a monk two years later, and as you already heard, at 14, he traveled to central Tibet to the Drepong Monastery for higher studies. I asked him, how did you travel from Khan, which is the Geshe La Rampa, equivalent to a doctorate from the re-established Drepong Monastery in India? He quickly came to be regarded as an authority on Buddhism and on Mahatma Gandhi, and as you heard, became the principal and later the director of the Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies in Sarnath. Many universities have expressed their desire to confer honorary doctorates on Rinpoche, but he has politely declined them all. Rinpoche was appointed by His Holiness as a member of the Tibetan People's Deputies and at the Assembly of the member, uh, Tibetan People's Deputies and he was subsequently elected as chairman. In 2001, as you heard, he was elected Kalam Tripa, or Prime Minister of the Tibetan government in exile and held this position for 10 years. As Prime Minister, he was steadfast in his insistence on truth, non-violence and democracy as the three pillars of government. Rinpoche now travels the world spreading the message of nonviolence, compassion, <coughs> and contentment. A message especially relevant on Martyr's Day, the death anniversary of Mart Mahatma Gandhi, which, for, which is today. He bemoaned, Rimond Rinpoche bemoaned. It is the philosophy of interdependence and uh, conduct of nonviolence. Nonviolence, Jariya. And uh, what is the Sampad Darshan? This too is the only path through which the cause of entire suffering can be eradicated. And uh, he did never, the Sadat did never went just a symptom treatment, but to find the cause and eradicate it. The Mahatma. Guru Ravindran Tagore very rightly gave this title as a Mahatma. And I think in a modern India, during the last few centuries, when a real Mahatma was born in this country, that is the Mandas Kanjan Gandhi. There is very similarity as Siddharth saw the suffering and then he just think of the root cause and not just a symptom treatment. Gandhi, when he was thrown out of a train in spite of his wedding uh, ticket and he did not oppose the individual 
who have done the unlawful thing, injustice to him. And he just pondered upon why the person behaving this manner and there is much deeper cause, a cause in a system, in a structure and therefore he not opposing or not fighting back to the individuals but he <coughs> try to find out the root cause of such injustice and how to eradicate 